Hello friends. Welcome back to my video. Oh, I'm gonna burp. Hold up. <clears throat> what a great way to start. Um, welcome back to another podcast episode. Um, because your dad is just dying. <laughs> In fact, uh, let's put on some summer night ambiance now. Oh yeah, it's sleepy time now. <laughs> well, I have your attention too, so you guys know. We'll talk about it throughout the episode, but uh, next Heat Death Sale is this Friday, April 19th. Um, heatdeath.co, baby. Go sign up for the mailing list so you know about things. We did it. Two months. We said that we were going to do a drop every two months, and it's two months to the date. Um, talking about Heat Death real quick, actually. Because that's literally all I've been doing. Um, me and Julia and Susie have been in shipping hell for a long time. The last two weeks. Um, but it looks like we got everything out. Um, I think the only thing that's left right now are posters, which we're waiting on their own little shipping tubes for. Um, and then uh, the international orders are still waiting to clear customs right now, so... Hopefully you got your order received email or order shipped email. And hopefully most of the people watching this already got your order. You should tell me down below what you think of the quality. Because I think we knocked it out of the park, dude. Um, also, in like, keep an eye on your email inboxes because we requested people to give reviews of products. And it helps a lot. So and we'll talk about heat death more lately or later in the video, but I'm running on like half a brain cell between like, like I'm pretty sure I borrowed that brain cell from one person or sorry. I think I borrowed one brain cell between two people. Julie and Susie have are they've given me all of their charity brain cells. I hope that makes sense. I am sorry that I look like this. I look like a little homeless lesbian because um, I am kind of half of that, maybe fully soon. Um, but yeah, dude, it's I, I am very sorry for um, no new videos recently, just like the compilation videos. This drop that we did was uh, so time consuming um, in a good way because we... I think we really stepped it all up and I, I'll talk about other things first. I don't know. Heat death is like, I already told you the sale is on Friday. I love doing podcast episodes. Um, cause I know by now, most of you watching this are so uh, trying to sleep. I get it. I know what my voice does. No one listens to me. They go, that's nice. And then they fall asleep. When I was in, I don't know if I've said this before on a video, but uh, one of the things that girls used to do in like middle school and even elementary school too, they'd like put their feet on the back of my chair and they'd be like, oh my God, it vibrates. Your voice vibrates the chair. And me as a little autistic boy was like, stop talking to me. I don't know how to respond to that without realizing they were probably hitting on me. I had like such a realization the other day um, because like I was bullied as we all know. <laughs> Shut up. Um, like in middle school and high school, I was always like, no girls like me. I am gross and ugly and all this stuff. And I like had one of those existential ha moments uh, the other night in bed where I was like, oh my God, they were hitting on me so much, but I was too weird to notice and then too weird to like the second they realized that I was as weird as I am. No more interest. <laughs> it's funny thinking back on like you have your own life story for yourself. You're like, this is the struggle that I went through. And at least for me, getting older, you know, closing in on 30, one month, uh, 
it's really funny, like going back and being like, oh yeah, your life story, like it was only kind of like how you thought it was. <laughs> In fact, it was mostly not how you thought it was. Um, so that's something that sent me down a nice spiral the other night. There's nothing like a good spiral. Just going from no thoughts for like a week straight, autopilot working. And then one night you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know. I actually, this is an interesting thing that'll probably get us demonetized really quickly. We're five minutes in. It's just six minutes in. It's okay. Um, so as you all know, I'm an alcoholic, um, at least the next one. I stopped drinking in, in August um, of last year because of Susie's medical issues. And, and I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I was like blacking out every night for at least four to five nights of the week, at least brown out four to five nights a week for the last 10 years. Like just really bad comes from what I was doing as a kid. I was on tour since I was 14. So like, you, you know, no shot in hell at any type of normalcy or normal habits or behaviors. Um, but, uh, yeah, I became an alcoholic from, you know, being in the rock scene, <laughs> but, uh, I, I quit in August. Um, and I did like straight, no alcohol for four months until January. And then at new year's, I had like a glass of champagne and whatever. Cause I, I don't want to be like one of those alcoholics. that's like weird. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be a person that's like, he has a problem. So whenever you guys are having fun, you got to make sure that you got kid gloves on around Brady because he can't handle his liquor. Like, that's stupid. I think that my, um, my hate to be perceived as lesser uh, can absolutely and does trump my addictive genes. <laughs> so afraid of being stupid. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I, I didn't have a, a drink for four months until January. And then, um, I've slowly kind of like actually, and, and pretty successfully kind of like worked it back in to like social settings. So like if me and Susie go out, uh, usually if we're like just the two of us going out, I don't really drink anymore and she barely drinks, but, uh, cause she was cancer. Um, but, uh, um, like if we're in a social setting, like we're out with friends or like have people over, like I can now successfully like have a drink or two and then be done. And like, like, and not even be like, I have to cut this off or else I'll, you know, be stupid and embarrass myself. I'm literally like mm, feeling pretty good. It's that thing that like, uh, once you as an alcoholic, or at least as like an, uh, an addict, as, as I am, um, there's always that, like, at least before for me, there was always that you can't stop. Like it was always the chasing the dragon thing where you're like, I feel great. I just need to keep doing this in excess to keep up feeling great. And taking that four month reset and then slow integration back in over the last eight months. Um, like I now know, like I beat the, the dragon chase a little bit, like where I'm like, after like, th I would say the cut, like probably after three to four drinks, your buzz is not getting better. Like you have peaked probably, I would say drink number three, you can kind of bring it back up with number four and five if you're going hard. Um, but after like drink three, there's something in my brain now that goes, you're not going to this buzz is not getting better than this. So you should probably pack it in because everything else about this is stupid. <laughs> so I just realized too, how fucking big and menacing and black this, um, phallic object is in my face. So hopefully you can see it, my face. Um, well, not that that's important. I know you're asleep. I'm talking to no one right now. That's so weird. There's probably so many people actually, listening, but no one's awake. Um, whatever. Anyway. So one of the ways that I kind of broke 
that addictiveness or, or that, um, I guess, addictive tendency or trigger with alcohol was just getting really high all the time. Um, and you know, I, I never was like a hey, person as a kid or a younger adult. It always freaked me out. It was always, I'd, I'd just get way too high. Um, and, uh, and then just like freak out in whatever social setting. And I had no desire to do that by myself. So, um, I never understood like, uh, weed, <laughs> I guess, but been on that path for about eight months now, <laughs> however long I've stopped drinking or controlled the drinking. And, um, I loved it for like the last seven months. Um, but there's something happening now and maybe some of the, of you that are a little bit more experienced can either relate to this or, or give me advice on it. But, uh, it used to be that every time I schmack, that, uh, it's just a good time the whole time, every time, you know what I mean? Just like almost that, like the perfect aspect of an alcohol buzz, but like you're not drunk and it goes away and you just want to eat food. Um, just like the pure enjoyment of it. And now recently within like the last month, like whenever I get hot, I, uh, I like experience for like probably five to 10 minutes, like all the, all the greatness that I'm used to. Um, but then like little thoughts start poking in that never happened before when I was hot. And like now it actually really sucks, especially at night. Now, whenever I'm hot, I, it's like a bombardment of like every little thing that I'm worried about, like creeps in where before it was these beautiful build the wall, um, kind of shit that just kept me safe from all the things that I was overthinking. And now it's just like, Bum, it bombards me uh, so bad. <laughs> and like, I'm worried that that doesn't improve. And I've talked to a couple more experienced friends that are, have been on the path for many years. Um, and they're like, yeah, that's normal. Some of them are like, it doesn't go away. <laughs> and some are like, it goes away. So basically useless information is all I've gotten anecdotally. So if you have any, um, any insight on that, I'd, I'd be pretty appreciative. Dude, does it feel like we're FaceTiming right now? I don't even know what I've been talking about for 13 minutes. That is th the skill to just talk is probably the only real skill I have. And that also messes with my head quite a bit. Because I don't think I'm very good at a lot of things, at most things. I think I'm good at some things. I think I know what's funny. And I think I know what's cringe pretty well. Those are, if you need a funny or cringe advisor, I'm consulting. But um, I, it's such a weird thing that I can just talk for, to no one. Because I can't do this with another person at all. I get tripped up. I get anxious, self-conscious. If a joke doesn't land, instantly flaccid. <laughs> I don't know why that I have this ability. I don't even think it's a good ability or even something I would call an ability. I can just talk. And I don't know if it's entertaining, but at least words come out. Cause like whenever I'm like, Hey Suze, let's like fucking jump on a thing. She's like, well, what do we talk about? And I'm like, that's the best part. Who knows? And who cares? It'll just happen. And she's like, no, we have to like talk about something. And I'm like, you will. And here we are full circle. You're asleep by now. Um, ugh. I dude, I'm dying. <laughs> I'm so thankful that it's getting like not 
depressing out. It's 80 degrees right now outside. I have the windows open to the house. I'm so like legitimately thankful for that, that it's warm. Um, cause I couldn't take any more winter, but, um, what the fuck am I talking about? Oh yeah. I'm dying. It's everything's been going good since, uh, since chemo ended. I think we're three weeks post chemo, almost a month. Can't really, I think this Thursday it'll be a month. Maybe. Wow. How does that happen? Um, Susie's doing good. She's, uh, I don't know if I can say, uh, she wouldn't care if I said this. She's in temporary menopause, which is awful. Just sweating. Just feeling 56, 57 at 29 years old. I feel so bad for her. Um, and I think, you know, we still have to do the, the one month checkup with the surgery to get the port out. But, um, it seems as though she, she got out relatively unscathed. Um, she has a thyroid autoimmune disease now, um, which was one of the, there was four possible really adverse side effects, um, to the chemo being leukemia, uh, <laughs> really bad first one, um, fucking like kidney cancer, liver cancer, something like that. Um, uh, cardio, like cardiac, I don't know if I'm not a doctor, eat my fucking ass. Um, but like damage to your heart essentially. Um, and then the fourth bad thing that could happen, the least bad of the four bad things, um, is damage to the thyroid. Um, and it does look like she has some thyroid damage, um, which, you know, we were expecting any of those four. So to get a little bit of the least bad one, I'm very thankful for. And I know she is too, but, um, they don't know if it's permanent. Didn't know that about auto autoimmune diseases. They're like, yeah, you could have this your whole life or literally, uh, just until your body goes, eh, never mind. They might've been simplifying that for me since I'm a little homeless lesbian, but, um, sorry if that's wrong, but am I Joe Rogan? Um, but, uh, she does have that right now. And, um, if, uh, if it stays, it won't be too like life altering. I think it's just like a pill that you take every day for the rest of your life, which, um, sucks for sure, but better than leukemia or the breast cancer that she had. Um, but she's back to, to trying to feel better. She made all of our wedding invitations, which is, she handcrafted them. They're beautiful. Um, and, uh, you know, she has a little bit more energy. She actually has a really bad cold right now. She's asleep, but I don't know. I, you get to the end of it and you're like, all right, we did all that. Now what? And they're like, that's the best part. You do the same thing for an indefinite amount of time and hope that it gets better, which is fine. The hope of things getting better is better than things just ironcladly not getting better. Um, so, you know, I'm thankful, but it, it's, I haven't processed like anything still that's happened. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit, but I, I just feel this overwhelming um, tiredness. Like at any moment of the day, even on my ADHD, meth meds um at any moment of the day of the day i could lie down somewhere and close my eyes for two seconds and instantly fall asleep um so it's been a struggle for sure over the last like two months month whatever the last time is that i checked in on you guys with a podcast but um it's been a struggle i'm very tired um, and that's also from the monumental amount of work that heat death was this time, which we can get into, um, when I change the camera cards out here. Um, uh, but yeah, I hope that you're doing great. This is not about me. This is us talking. 
And I'm sure, uh, I hope all of you are just sitting with the comments open on this video. And every time I say something that you want to chime in on, just comment it. Kind of like a live stream, maybe. Does wonders for the YouTube algorithm. All right, hold on. I'm going to pee and change the cards out and we'll be back for another 20 seconds. I'll talk to you in a moment. All right, I'm sure the camera angle changed. Um, my camera fell over. It's a great day. It's a beautiful day. Oh, I got to start the timer so I know when. Uh, I have no idea what we were talking about. Life is temporary. Moments are fleeting. Podcast hosts don't know what they were talking about for 20 minutes. This isn't a podcast. This is a, this is a diary at this point. You're asleep. You don't care. Uh, I do have, for this next 20, uh, just thought I'd answer some questions um, from the last podcast episode and from Discord. Um, so if you want to throw anything down in the comments for the next one, I go back to the last episode and answer those. Um, got a couple here, though. This one says, have you ever thought about doing an American tour yet or waiting for more listeners? Uh, if you mean with our band, I Love You, I Know, we, I would say we're probably a couple years away from doing any kind of tour. We, uh, I was hoping that we would be touring by this point, but you know, with, with what everything that happened to Susie and, and just life in general, trying to get married, it, it just isn't possible. Um, but I am actually out on the road, uh, more frequently now. Um, I'm doing like stage managing and guitar and drum teching for, uh, this EDM act called, uh, Kezo, if you know Kezo, my roommate, bandmate, best friend is Kezo's drummer. And, um, now I work for him because nepotism is a terrible thing that we should get rid of. Um, but I mean, I've, I did like touring crew gigs for forever. I did crew for issues and falling in reverse and made a parade and warp tour and my other bunch of bands. It doesn't matter. Um, but it's been really fun because I, uh, don't know anything about the EDM world at all. The only EDM shows I've been to are the ones that I'm working. Uh, and it's so different, dude. It's so, I would say it's almost better than the rock scene in the sense that like the rock scene is like really gatekeepy and like very like subliminal, subliminally aggro. Like rock fans are terrible. It's just like book talk. Book talk people are all, if you are one, I'm going to generalize you. 95% of book talk people are the worst people on the internet. Just the chronically online, every label in the world. I ha I'm a victim for this reason. And I love my little porn books, which I love your little porn books too. I'm on book three of Sarah J. Maas. Just, just, that's it's just a porn book, but I get it. I get it. I understand the appeal, throbbing members and all that. Um, but, uh, oh shit. Oh, the rock scene. Like the rock scene is a lot of, at least in my 10 years of experience with it, 15 years of experience with it. Um, it's a lot of like gatekeepy and like chronically online and like very quick to be aggro and entitled people, which I, I love the rock scene. I'll never actually talk shit on it. I'm only talking shit because I grew up in it. I hate this town. Um, but yeah, it's like the rock scene is full of like those kind of people, at least like the super fans, like maybe like the casual concert goers and listeners, the majority of people that go to rock shows are not like that. But um, the loudest ones certainly are. Um, but at least in my observations with, with EDM, uh, and again, it's different cause I'm crew and I have literally no involvement online with, with, uh, that artist, with the artist that I'm working for. Um, the EDM kids, like they seem to be stoked and this is refreshing. They seem to be stoked more on like the idea of music and live music than like the commodification and 
personally and like the personal salvation of music that is in the rock world. I don't know if that makes sense. Like the rock world, all the people there, every song is like, Oh my God, this song fucking saved my life. And I love that shit, obviously. Cause I know how that feels. Um, but there's like a conformity to that product being the same way every time it's played because it has a lot of meaning personally to the members of the audience where like EDM, like obviously it's just fucking like that shit. Um, and like, uh, I feel like the people that go to EDM shows are more just like there for the overall positive experience of the show, which then kind of trickles down as Reagan would love um, to every other aspect of a show. And like people just seem to be a lot nicer than the rock world, a lot more appreciative, a lot more like in tune with the whole fucking point of why we're there, if that makes sense. Granted, they're also on, on the most drugs I've ever seen. So it could also be that. The first show I worked for that artist um, was a couple weeks ago. We did uh, Denver. And I'm just at Monitor World for my fellow musicians listening. Um, just ears in, talk back mic, babysitting stage, and just watching. Like, you know, you can only really see the front row, but there's so many people that are just and it's awesome. <laughs> like it's so sick to watch someone be brought down to like an infantile mindset from drugs and then like just really enthusiastically and primally enjoy what is happening in front of them. I know that sounds maybe stupid because like, uh, you know, at that point you're like, well, then what's the point of music? They're just getting high and being in a room where loud sounds and colorful lights and lasers are. And I don't have an answer to that um, stick in the mud, but it, it maybe because I've never experienced it, it just feels nice, feels refreshing, feels respectful. A lot of ass hanging out everywhere. A lot of ass that probably shouldn't be hanging out. A lot of smells, more smells in the rock world, different smells. It's a lot of, you know, ass smell and sweat and BO just with a lot more um, perfume. So you're the same gross people. But since you have your ass out, you want to hide it a little bit more than us crust, crusty rock kids. I don't know. I'll report back with more findings, but I've really loved it. Um, next show, if any of you guys are in Las Vegas or going to EDC. I'm going to be there all Sunday of that EDC weekend. We headline um, EDC Sunday. So I'll be in Las Vegas um, Sunday morning to Sunday night for anyone that uh, is going to be at EDC or wants to hang out. I'm just, I can't wait to meet James Kennedy from Vanderpump Rules, which is my current favorite show of all time. If you don't watch Vanderpump Rules, you are stupid. It is the best reality TV show since Jersey Shore. And let me move on with other questions. Um, have, would you ever consider collabing with any creators on YouTube? Who is your dream collab? That is a great question. Honestly, no one. <laughs> um, I'm not a, I've, I, it's probably because I've never really done it. I've done it once or twice, like collabing on YouTube videos. And each time it's just been a headache, like, trying to convince someone that the way I made something the way it is, because I think it's funny that way, having to justify why I make decisions creatively is a such a terrible quality of mine. I hate it. It feels like pulling teeth and doing this already feels like pulling teeth sometimes. So like, why would I, I don't know. I'd love to make a video with Sorrow TV, um, Rip. I don't know if he's dead, but I took his bit, so. Buried you, motherfucker. Not actually. You were so much more successful than I. Um, I would love to do like a gaming stream with like ambiguous amphibian. Um, 
just because I play all like those same nerdy games and I love his voice. I literally think that Ambiguous Amphibian is like one of the funniest, naturally funniest YouTubers out there. Um, me and Suze fall as- have like the last two weeks. She actually likes him too. She hates YouTubers. She thinks they're so annoying. Um, me included. And uh, she loves Ambiguous Amphibian. She thinks he is, she laughs at every little thing he says. And I'm like, fuck you lizard but i also love him so it's hard to say that um but like we fall asleep to his vods and shit uh i would love to do a gaming stream with him ambiguous amphibian if you're watching this which you aren't at all but i'd love to play rim world with you sometime my favorite game of all time other than that like no real no real dying needs to collab no one i'd really consider because I don't know the space well enough. I'm an insulated bubble. I do what I do and that's it. And I think that a part of my success has come from that. And also a part of my um, stagnation has come from that. So I would love to do collabs. If there's any like smaller YouTubers that you guys watch, like maybe like up to 100,000 subscribers, um, because then they'd actually answer my messages. Uh, If you guys think of anyone that you would want me to collab with or like think that I would do well with or whatever, like leave them down in the comments. Cause I, I do want to get over the bad taste in my mouth from collabing. Um, I just really, because I have no desire to from that bad taste, I just don't really value it yet. And I'd love to see value in it. So maybe tag some people that, that would be good, smaller. Like I said, you know, probably 10,000 subs to like a hundred thousand, maybe a little bit over a hundred thousand, whatever. I'll definitely message him. Um, if I, if I like him, how did you and your partner meet? And do you ever wish you met in different circumstances every day of my life? Um, me and Susie met on Tinder, uh, in Los Angeles. She was, uh, on loan from Syracuse university. She was getting a, uh, cinematography filmmaking degree which she has used to great effect i can't even knock it i usually say that college is so stupid but she she did the right move um she was on a study abroad program from syracuse university uh where they just were like here's a shitty apartment in la go do intern stuff um so she was doing that for a semester and i had just moved back to la for like the umpteenth freaking time um, I was working as an engineer in a bunch of rooms and also doing, uh, delivery apps and shit to make ends meet and was also working on a band. The last one I was in, uh, and I had, you know, it was love at first sight. I had my radius maxed out at 50 miles and she was 49 miles away. So, you know, that's love. Uh, we met on there and like, I was so, you know, drunk and on Adderall because working in studios, they feed it to you like candy. Um, that when we matched, we just kind of like unseriously flirted for a number of weeks and she would be like, do you want to hang out? And I'd be like, yeah. And then I'd get blackout drunk and, and not answer, um, for like multiple times. And it got to the point where I think we were like two weeks of just like very passively talking um, on Tinder. And she was finally like, hey, like, let's meet up or like, I'm probably going to like move on from this. And I thought she was really cool because she loved, <laughs> she's pretty sick. Uh, she loved a lot of bands that I loved. And she also had a big fat ass. And what's, what, how could I resist that? You know, I'm a red blooded, straight white male. Um, So we ended up meeting up and uh, at first I thought I got catfished because she had, she had straightened her hair in all of her profile pictures on Tinder. And she has very naturally like Afro Caribbean, like almost kind of an Afro. Her hair is huge and curly or it was, it's growing back right now and it's white and stick straight. So I might have a Corella DeVille bitch in a little bit, but, um, uh, she, we, I finally was like, okay, I really, I think this girl's c- cool. And like, 
if she's saying, hey, either we meet up tonight or I'm moving on, then I don't get to touch your butt. So I was like, you know what? I'll not get blackout drunk today. I'll just get a little drunk and I will hang out with you. And we went and got all you can eat sushi and ramen at a place in North Hollywood called Dragon Street. There's no way anyone knows that place, but I'm putting it out on the record in case anyone ever goes there. I don't even know if it's still around. I think it is. It probably is. It's been there a while. Uh, But we went to Dragon Street in North Hollywood and I fell in love with her. But before that, when I picked her up at her apartment, I thought I got catfished catfished because she had her Afro hair rocking. And when she doesn't have her hair straightened, she looks a lot more um, uh, Afro-Caribbean than what I thought she looked like. So I was like, I don't know who this girl is that just got in my car. She probably thinks that this is an Uber. And I go, uh, hey. And she goes, hey. I'll never forget that. Yep. Then we went and ate sushi and ramen and, uh, she didn't leave my house for a week and I fell in love with her and now we're getting married. Hopefully. Third time's the charm. Although World War Three. If World War Three cancels our fine, our third attempt at getting married, we are courthouse in that bitch. No doubt in my mind. <laughs> um, let me look at other questions here. Uh, you ever just want to eat an entire bag of shredded cheese? I did that two nights ago. Felt really bad about it, but we need to go to Trader Joe's. We are out of food. Uh, Yawai or Yuri? No, what? No idea what that is. Is that a Fallout Three bear monster? Um. Oh, everyone's saying like, uh, question mark. Why to that? Um. Maybe don't ask questions like that, and maybe fix yourself. Whatever your name is. Are you a furry? Nope. I think it's pretty fucking weird. Um. I think it's so weird if you're sexualizing it. I think that. It's already hard to not get made fun of in life and maybe pick a different hobby if you don't want to, you know, sometimes we pick the struggles that we have, but if you're a furry, that's fine. Like maybe, you know, I don't want to see it. Like the costumes freak me out. Gives me that same like clown fear, uh, for good reason. Uh, what's your favorite dinosaur? Ooh, probably basic as fuck. Probably Velociraptor. I've always loved them. Just from the noises, specifically the Jurassic Park 3, the fucking... That sound that they make, that probably just wokes up someone. Sorry, go back to bed. You don't need to be here. Listen, you hear the cicadas? I don't know what ambient track I put behind this. What's your favorite home-cooked meal? Uh, good, Good old steaks. I like to grill. I love all aspects of cooking. Um, but now that it's 80 degrees out, I'm like, let's fucking get some dripping juicy meats on a hot grill. What's your dream car? Uh, Lamborghini Aventador, but that's never going to happen. Um, realistic dream car used to be a Tesla. It's not really a Tesla anymore for, um, tweetish reasons. Plus, like, their build quality is going, like, all this stuff. I still want one. Maybe, like, right now, I would say maybe, like, a Rivian. I really, I was one of those people that loved the Cybertruck. Like, the design of it. Not the person making it or the weight or the false promises or any of the build quality issues. I really did like the way the Cybertruck looks and looked. I've seen a couple wraps on them that are, like, the hardest thing I've ever seen. I saw this one Cybertruck that was, like, it was like a Arctic camo diamond scale wrap pattern on it. And it, it was the hardest thing I've ever seen. I hate to say it. That's the only good thing that Elon has done in the last while besides SpaceX. But he'll fuck that up too. He's probably going to clog up the uh, all available orbit space with Starlink satellites and trap us on this planet forever. Who cares? I don't. Uh, do you know where in the world Carmen San Diego is? No. Sorry. Uh, 
How long is, how has life been navigating from band life to where you are now with Heat Death, YouTube, and Susie? It's really hard. It's really weird um, because I still feel that pull to like do music all the time. And I still do music all the time, but like, it's weird that I don't do that every day for a living anymore. I love Heat Death. I think Heat Death is one of the most fulfilling things that, that, could have ever happened to me. I really do love it. Um, it's just all very different. I don't know right now. I'm in such a weird place in adult life because I am now an adult adult. Um, and just like trying to figure out, figure out how to navigate that is really, really hard. I don't have any answers. I don't know what the next six months look like. I don't know what the next year looks like. I can't even fucking imagine five years from now. Like legitimately cannot imagine five years from now. I don't know what it'll look like. Um, but yeah, it, it is really gnarly leaving because I did it for so long, man. That was my adolescence. It's what I grew up doing like through, I call it, I always call it like that was my high school and college was being out on the road. And it doesn't feel great to not do it anymore, but I don't miss so many aspects. Like I couldn't sleep on the floor anymore. I couldn't eat like that anymore. I couldn't drink like that anymore. So I said, I got to change the camera card out, but we'll, we'll, I'll remember this. I promise. And if, when we come back, I don't, <laughs> that's your fault. All right. One sec. Okay. Yeah. I didn't remember. And that's your fault. So, um, but no, I, I, I miss it. And I think my only advice is that with anything that feels lost as you get older, it's only actually lost if you decide it is, right? Poetic. But yeah, I miss it a lot. But I, I only really want it again on my own terms, which is uh, can't have your cake and eat it too unless you bake the cake yourself. So um, let me read some more of this stuff. What's your favorite art genre and why? This includes literally any form of art or creative medium. I love people that can, especially like gaming YouTubers. There's a YouTuber that I watch a lot of right now because again, RimWorld has a hold on my sack. Um, his name's Rat Knight. Plays, I think, only RimWorld. Um, but he's fantastic at taking something that was made by someone else that's meant literally to just be played by yourself and just have your own personal enjoyment. And he is so fantastic at telling a story. Um, there's so many YouTubers, gaming YouTubers like that. Um, obviously I think one of the, the first ones that I watched as a kid or younger adult that like kind of expanded my view on what, um, storytelling through mediums could be was, uh, Frankie on PC and 1080p rip um, just made the, the best videos like just was so good at taking something that happened in an emergent gameplay kind of way and just telling a story that felt real um, and also the editing was fantastic his voice is great he's such a good you know quasi actor um so I, I love people that can make stories out of things. Um, I love video essays. I love video essays. You give me a World War II video essay. Oh my God. I'm there for all 58 minutes. Um, something that I just watched recently that blew my absolute mind uh, is this new kind of like anime on Netflix called Blue Eye Samurai. If you haven't watched Blue Eye Samurai, watch it. It is from second one. It is a masterpiece in a way that like I would put it on the same like masterpiece feeling as like a Studio Ghibli uh, movie. Like I'm not even kidding. It's that fantastic. Um, and the art style is so innovative. It reminds me of like Code Lyoko, but doesn't make me feel autistic for, for, for watching it. I don't know if anyone knows Code Lyoko. Um, but it, Blue Eye Samurai is like 
like my mouth was hanging open for 80% of that show. And it is heartbreaking and it is so viscerally awesome to behold. Go watch it. It's only eight episodes. It feels like, it feels like Cowboy Bebop meets like, uh, fucking Code Lyoko animationally meets like a fucking Miyazaki film meets like, oh God, like, like a Tarantino movie almost. Like it's just got, it like pisses style and substance and cool factor that's justified and earned like it's drinking cheap beer. It's, it's amazing. Go watch that show. If you haven't, I finished it last night and I'm so sad that there's no more to watch. Um, Mizu is probably one of the best, uh, like women leads I've woman leads I've ever seen in a piece of media. I think that, um, Mizu is like literally everything that modern day Hollywood looking at you, Star Wars and Ray wants to shove down your throat that like they think that what they think their character, their, their female fronted characters are is what Mizu from blue eyed samurai actually is. Um, like I, I think she is one of the most badass women I've ever seen in media. Um, and I, I fucking love her. I love that show. And I hadn't seen a masterpiece in a long time. I, I can't remember the last time that I've legitimately watched something and been like, that's a masterpiece. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I've, I've watched a lot of shout out Apple TV. God, I hate Apple. I just got a new iPhone 15 pro max. I hate Apple. Uh, but Apple TV bangers. So good. Everything on there. Um, but yeah, go watch Blue Eyes Samurai. It's fantastic. It's so good. I have a fucking burrito waiting for me downstairs right now, and I keep thinking about it. Um, I don't know what the hell we were talking about. Uh, oh, favorite art genre. I think animation is my favorite genre of, of art and media, 100%. I think animation is the truest actually epic like I don't need to see Robert Downey Jr. getting a big Thanos fucking throbbing member in his face in Endgame for the umpteenth like CGI stuff just turns me off now Star Wars ruined it shout out Kathleen Kennedy you are the worst uh, I think Marvel stuff is terrible I hate Star Wars now um, but I still think that the purest form of storytelling is, is animation. I think the last time that I thought something was a masterpiece was Demon Slayer. Um, and now Blue Eye Samurai, which I think Blue Eye Samurai is, is better than anything, uh, anime. Since Cowboy Bebop, I have never seen anything that made me feel that way. So again, go watch it. Um... Rachel asks, any tips for starting your own brand? Um, no, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't think I'm good at it. I think that my brand is just literally who I am, which might be the best tip for establishing a brand. Um, people, people don't realize this, um, but authenticity, especially on the internet when you're watching creators, authenticity is so easy to tell. It's so easy to know instinctively, like just like without, without actually thinking about it, you know, when you watch a creator or hear the way a creator talks or how their content is made, you can get a pretty good idea of who that person is immediately and whether or not you like them. And granted, there's, you know, so many manufactured images that, that people put forward. And I put forward a, a manufactured image of myself to you guys, not in like, I think that I am pretty shameless in the way that I express myself online because I was in that weird 
generation of between millennial and Gen Z were like, for some reason as a kid, I was like, oh yeah, you should overshare online. Um, but I, I think that people are so, people are so dumb, but people are so good at knowing if they feel like what they're consuming is authentic. It's gotten really hard recently with just like the politicalization of everything and the sides drawn on everything and AI content and, you know, just the general disingenuous bullshit that, that, um, content creation, the kind of bullshit person that content creation attracts. Um, but I think that people are very good at instinctively knowing whether or not the thing they are consuming is authentic. Um, and I think that's been a very big benefit for myself. Um, since I am shameless, as shameless as I am for better or for worse online, I think that people know that the piece of shit that I am is exactly what they're getting and they either love it or hate it kind of thing. So when you're establishing a brand, it, you should just do what is authentically you. You can curate it in certain ways. If you have a very good understanding of yourself and your personality, um, then you can curate that authenticity to kind of be an even better version of your authentic self. Um, but it's just, just be authentic. Just literally, if you think something's cool, just present that thing that you think is cool for the reasons that you think it's cool. Um, because if it's cool to you, then there's a real authentic reason why it was cool to you. And you can then give that to other people because people just want things that are real. Like, and especially now, like with the way that again, AI is headed and, and just like the amount of bullshit content that's out there. I think the, you know, in the coming years, the real commodity is going to be finding authentic, genuine people online that you like and relate to because 99% of all the content you're going to see is just absolute horseshit. Um, so if that's what you mean as a brand for like, uh, that aspect of things, it's just be authentic. If you mean a brand like a company or a business, I think, um, you know, model your company or business after the successes that other companies or businesses have had. We model a lot of stuff off of clothing lines that I love. Um, you know, art is all about imitation and variation on that imitation. Um, so nothing is new under the sun, but what is new is something that people already like through the filter of your authentic self. Um, so that's what we try to do with heat death. Everything on, you know, I spend a lot of time on heat death, making sure that there's a lot of little details of my personality and Susie's personality that come through all of the descriptions of our products. I try to write in a way that I think is funny, that I think is enjoyable, that just has like a little stamp of who I am mentally. I don't, do you guys just hear that sound, that whistling sound? I hope that's not a ghost. I think it was me um, not being able to feel my tongue because I bit it earlier. Um, but just like making sure that 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 comes through is so important. Um, and I take pride in like, you know, we build out heat death to, to, to be the thing that we want it to be. And then I kind of season in who I am with it, if that makes sense. Uh, and who Susie is too. Um, it's a genuine artistic, re re you know, representation of who we are as people. And heat death looks exactly like how our souls feel. And I can say that with a hundred percent certainty. And I think that you probably know that too, if that makes sense. Um, so that's to me what a good brand is. I think you can chase trends. You can, you can, you know, you can embrace not wanting to be yourself for as long as you want. Um, but you'll probably lose people when they ultimately get tired of the thing that you are projecting and curating. Um, hold on, let me unplug this real quick. 
my little camera card reader is on its last leg. I got to get a new one. Keeps disconnecting, reconnecting. But uh, I think that, that, oh God, what I, oh, just, yeah, it, it, heat death is us. And if you want to create a brand, make it a reflection of yourself that you are proud of and you think is cool. And if you build it, they will come. Unless what you think is cool is not cool, which I can't help you with that. You either got it or you don't. Uh, Speaking of heat death, now that we're towards the end, uh, this Friday, new drop, heatdeath.co. We're going to have everything that was for sale last drop still up. So if you wanted something from there, don't worry, it's not going away. Got a couple new designs, a couple new uh, really cool um, garment ways that we're trying out. A uh, bunch of classic designs going on new garments. A um, bunch of uh, bunch of experimental stuff. Since this last drop was really success- successful in our timeline of, of production, I think we're going to try to be a little innovative on this one. Um, it's going to last two weeks from the 19th to whenever the hell two weeks is from that. Um, so we'll be adding new items, uh, every couple days throughout those two weeks. We're, we're kind of testing what, uh, we can support sales wise. Um, cause we've never done a drop two months, like back to back like this. Um, cause usually it takes us six months to produce and this time it took us seven weeks. Um, so we're, this is another test drop. We're kind of seeing what is what can what can the audience of Heat Death right now support? Like what the appetite is. So I hope you guys blow me out of the water. Would love that. But even if it's smaller, which it won't be, but if it is, um, it's good data to have. So we're trying to pay for a wedding. Our third one. Lost $16,000 from the first one. Lost everything except for the security deposit. Because we didn't want to have it there anymore. We were like, why are we getting married? And after our, our chapel fell into the ocean, we were like, why are we getting married now? We had the reception venue in Long Beach that we only chose because it was near the chapel we wanted. So we were like, why are we getting married in Long Beach, California? And we canceled it and lost a bunch of money. It fucking sucked. But you do what you do for love. Um, but yeah, then we looked at New Orleans and had a couple venues we really loved that we did not check when hurricane season was. And then when we found out when it was, we were like, oh, no, can't do that. So now we have a new date. It's in October. I'll let you guys know soon what we're doing. I'm trying to keep it private right now. We're doing a much smaller wedding than before. Um, just like very friends and family kind of thing. But I'll let you guys know about it when the time comes. Uh, but yeah, make sure to go to Heat Death and get something this Friday. It's going to last for two weeks. Heatdeath.co. Sign up for the mailing list. Uh, yeah, dude, this drop killed me. I literally have like burn marks on my fucking arms from printing it, but it turned out so good. And then I was shipping this time, which usually I let Julia, uh, handle all the shipping cause she's very good at it. Um, but we needed the, the hands. So I shipped every single order that went out. She was like, you know, inventorying and shrink wrapping and packing or picking orders and organizing. And I was the one that put it in the bag and wrote on your note and paid for the postage and sealed it up. A lot of packages I sat on. Julie also sat on many packages. We're not going to get into that. Um, but it burnt me out. No, it didn't burn me out. I'm just like exhausted. But I can't wait for the next one because there were so many new things that we were trying with this last drop that succeeded, which crazy. Um, and I hope that you're excited for it. I hope that you pick yourself up something nice because it helps me marry a very beautiful girl with cancer. Have I pulled on your heartstrings enough? I'm going to go eat my burrito. Um, make sure to comment down below on uh, collab YouTube people. At around, you know, just under a little over 100,000 subs. Would love to to maybe try that out. I do have new Freem's videos coming out this week. There'll probably be one on Friday when the sale starts. I have an ASMR video that I'm working on that I got your guys' feedback uh, about a couple weeks ago. 
Um, probably be ready for a ton of content over the next two weeks since we're in a sale. That's like my only job is to promote. So a lot of content. Um, but if you're enjoying listening to me talk to myself for an hour, uh, let me know. I, I love it. It makes me feel, I feel lighter for some reason. I'm also sweating cause I, it's 80 degrees and we did not have the, we have not turned on our AC for the year. So um, kind of a swamp around my balls at the moment. Swampy balls. I'll see you in Vegas uh, in the middle of May. If you're going to EDC, be there Sunday. Um, and I hope all of you are great. I love you dearly. I'm going to be back on live streaming on TikTok hopefully this week. I'm waiting uh, for a new interface. The Lewitt Connect 6 that I bought, the mobile port was broken, so they are replacing it. And I'll be back on live um, once they throw me a new one. I love you all very much. Uh, I hope you're asleep and that you didn't hear any of this. Uh, if you are asleep, I am now going to subconsciously implant that you are going to go to heatdeath.co and sign up for the mailing list for our drop this Friday. Love all of you very much. Thank you for sticking with me even during the dry times. And I hope all of you are loving your heat death orders because they were all made with a ton of love. I'm going to go get high. All right. Love you. Bye.